Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 7b. Here we're going to dig deeper into the mechanism of mitosis, how the steps we discussed in the previous lecture actually come about. And we'll also frame the problem more clearly in the sense of what's the problem mitosis has to solve and how does it solve this problem, the mechanistic details. So first we'll start with a question. So here's a cell undergoing mitosis. You're given the genotype of the parent cell. What are the genotypes of the daughter cells? And if you remember from last time, the genotypes of the daughter cells will be the same as the genotype of the parent cells, not some other fancier combination that you might vaguely remember from high school genetics. Now, here's the, the slide from the previous lecture where we clarified what mitosis has to accomplish. If things go wrong, the daughter cells end up with different numbers of chromosomes than each other, and most importantly, different numbers of chromosomes than the parent cell. When mitosis is done right, the daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes and the same kind of chromosomes, the same homologs, as the parent cell. So the problem that mitosis must solve is how to bring this situation about, how to give each daughter cell the same set of chromosomes that the parent cell has. So we talked about the events, and the first event, or non-event, is that once the DNA is replicated, the two daughter double-stranded DNA molecules with, which, with their associated proteins are called chromatids. And the two that are produced by a single DNA replication are called sister chromatids. So the sister chromatids stay together. These are two chromatids and these are sister chromatids. They stay together after DNA replication. And then the next event is actually a structure that each chromosid has a structure called the kinetochore at a place called its centromere. So the kinetochore is a protein structure where the spindle fibers are going to attach to pull the chromosomes apart. And the centromere is the DNA sequence that serves as the site where the kinetochore forms. So each chromosome or chromatid has a centromere and they're usually indicated either by a little dot on the chromosome or by some sort of constriction in the chromosome. So the spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores of the two sister chromatids, and for each pair they attach from opposite directions, and then they pull the pairs of chromatids apart. And then once that has happened, the cell can divide in two. So I'll just draw the division because I didn't animate it, giving two daughter cells, each with the same chromosome that the parent cell had. You might be asking, wait, how do the spindle fibers know which kinetochore to grab? What if instead of one from this side grabbing this kinetochore and one from this side grabbing this kinetochore, what if this spindle fiber went around and grabbed that one. Now they get both get pulled to the same side. Why doesn't this problem happen? Well, it's not because the spindle fibers know which kinetochore to grab. They don't. They just grab randomly. But if nothing pulls back, they let go. So if the two kinetochores get attached to by spindle fibers from the same side of the cell, they're both pulling in the same direction. There's no tension on the kinetochores. And if there's no tension, then the spindle fibers let go. It's only if tension is established that one fiber is pulling from one side, the other fiber is pulling from the other side. Only then do we get a secure attachment of the fibers to the kinetochore. They then have a kind of a tug of war, and you'll see this if you watch some of the um, videos of actual chromosomes in mitosis that are posted on the module 7 page. 
um, you'll see the chromosomes are jiggling all over the place. And that's because the opposing spindle fibers are pulling in opposite directions. And it's only sort of the average outcome is that the two sister chromatids get pulled more or less to the middle of the cell. But there's another question you might be asking, and that is, well, why don't the chromatids separate right away? If you watch those videos, you'll see that this tug of war goes on for quite a while. Um, and it's only at the end, all of a sudden, all the chromatids come apart at once. Why don't they all separate as soon as the spindle fibers pull on them? And the answer is they can't come apart because they're tied together. They're tied together by loops of a protein called cohesin. So there's, I've drawn it just as little pink dots here, but these loops actually wrap around the DNA double helices, tying the two sister chromatids together. Cohesin doesn't let go until it gets a signal telling it that all of the spindle fibers have, all of the kinetochores have spindle fibers attached to them. That's, you might remember in the video in the previous, previous lecture, there was one cell that got stuck in mitosis and it stayed with its chromosomes at the center of the cell. The place called the metaphase plate is the name for the center of the cell. Um, it stayed there for as long as we watched. And I said that that cell hadn't received the okay that it could pass through the checkpoint, that the cell has a checkpoint to make sure everything's set up properly. And that checkpoint doesn't let cohesion come undone until all the chromosomes are properly attached to the spindle fibers. Once that signal, that checkpoint signal says, okay, we can go, then a protein called separase, so cohesin creates cohesion that holds the chromosomes together, separase, here indicated by a little pair of scissors, separase literally cuts the protein of cohesin, opening up the loops and allowing the chromatids to come apart. And cohesin is cut because separase is all the separase in the cell is activated at once, once the checkpoint signal succeeds and then all the chromatids come, are allowed to come apart all at once, which is what you'll see if you watch the videos. So what we've done, we thought of mitosis as a mechanism that solves a problem. The problem is getting the chromosomes into the right cells. And the solution is to keep the chromatid pairs together by tying them together so they can't come apart. And to tug both ways on each pair have spindle fibers that only stay attached if there's resistance so that each pair of sister chromatids participates in a tug of war where they're being pulled in both directions. And then once all the chromatids are attached, undo the ties, the loops of cohesin and protein all at once to let the chromatids come apart. If you watch this happen, you'll see that it makes sure that the spindle fibers are pulling one of each pair of chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. And that's how the cell knows that it's getting the right chromatids into the right daughter cells, by keeping the pairs together until the last minute and then splitting each pair of chromatids. Now, coming up next, we're going to start thinking about meiosis by thinking about sexual reproduction. And then we're going to get into how meiosis works, what meiosis's problem is, and how it solves it by essentially using the same mechanism and the same tools that mitosis uses. I hope to see you there.